So metagenomics is a new approach for microbiology, especially to look deeper into the invisible world around us. So previously, uh, in microbiology, we can see the invisible by maybe going out to take a sample from the environment, and then we can look in a microscope and we can identify who is there only by what we see. But of course, what you see is a little biased by what you can collect. So metagenomics is a new approach, maybe a different lens to look at the bacteria. Now we don't have to depend on being able to sample it and look under the microscope. Now we can go into the environment and extract the DNA and read the code that says who is there and what they are doing. So it really changes the resolution of the questions we can ask. We can see more of who is there. Not, we don't have to say, oh, it's just circles or just rods. We can say exactly who is there and what they are doing. And that allows us to study more complex questions. So the applications of metagenomics can be very broad, ranging from studying microbiology all around us. Microbiology impacts all facets of our life, from inside our bodies, digesting our vitamins and our food, to make keeping us healthy, to the air we breathe, cleaning the air we breathe, to helping plants grow in the soil, to keeping our water clean. So studying metagenomics is almost any environment and any complexity, and the complexity can range also. So the ocean has diverse animals, also diverse invisible microbiology, also inside our bodies, and also in agriculture, there's many applications for microbiology, and both good and bad. Metagenomics depends on a, a technology for sequencing DNA. So Sequencing with sequencing DNA, we can get a fingerprint of who is there. And the major shift in sequencing technology is that it has, has become very, very cheap. Um, and because it has become cheaper, we can sequence more samples. So when we can access more samples, we can study science that is more representative of the actual environment. Secondly, because it's also more affordable, more labs can access it. It's not such a specialty skill. So people all around the world now can access sequencing. But that has also really changed science because when you're a microbiologist, you used to only have to learn how to do certain skills, look in a microscope or to study some specific bacteria. But now the sequencing generates a specific type of data and it's very large and it comes in very fast. And a lot of biologists have to learn how to work with this computational data that defines the fingerprint of the DNA so we can define who is there and what they are doing. So um, sequencing, in 10 years ago, when they sequenced the first genome of bacteria, cost millions of dollars. Today, you can sequence the gut inside one person for $100. So it's really changed over just the last decade, and it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. So the microbiome and human health are, are, are increasingly being shown to be correlated. So um, it's being implicated in diseases such as diabetes, Crohn's, gut diseases. Of course, uh, microbiota on our bodies can be both good and bad, right? Not only do they cause problems for us, but they also keep us very healthy. So there's a lot of studies of how that affects us, but also beyond our bodies, not just in our bodies or on our bodies. but Microbiota are affecting our health in, for example, agriculture. For example, we study the movement of pathogens from animals, and then we take their, their poop and use it as fertilizer on our plants. And the question is, does the microbiome move from the poop to the plants to our water and how it comes to us? So our, the impacts of microbiology on human health are very broad, too. It's not just inside the, our bodies or on our bodies. It's our environment and how it affects us. And we're increasingly aware of the complexities of those interactions. And at that level, probably we can attack with the same. With the same technologies, yeah. The same technologies can be used to study these very complex questions.
It's been a real pleasure to collaborate directly with Sibnor. Uh, Sibnor has facilitated a lot of training of uh, students all around Mexico, and also we collaborate directly with Sibnor on research uh, related to some of the marine challenges and agricultural opportunities that affect local and global um, opportunities for research. So it's been a real pleasure, and they're doing fantastic research at Sibnor that we're very delighted to participate in. How long are you going to extend this collaboration? The, as long as they'll allow me to participate. <laughs>